The discriminant. The discriminant. Page 286. The discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. The book talks about all kinds of stuff that looks unreasonably complicated, so let's just toss that aside and let's make it simple for you. Minus b, say this with me, minus b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That you know as the quadratic formula. Now, in the quadratic formula, you've got a couple of uh, features that you might not have given a lot of thought to. One is the fact that there's the plus and the minus, and the other is that there is a square root sign. Whenever we have a square root of a normal positive number, uh, there are typically two roots. And uh, here's an example right now. If I say root 16, you say, and you say, yeah, I know the answer, it's 4. Well, you're right, the answer is 4, but the answer is also negative 4 because negative 4 squared is also 16. So, when you have a positive number and it's square rooted, there are two roots. And that's why we sometimes like to say plus or minus root 16 and say plus or minus 4 as the, as the answer, just to remind us that there are those two examples of, uh, of roots that will result in 16. Now, over here in the quadratic formula, we have the plus or minus in front of the square root to remind us of that very fact, that you could add it, you could subtract it, as long as it's a positive number to begin with. So this thing in here, I'll just highlight that in pink, this thing in here can tell us stuff. Because if that thing in there, b squared minus 4ac, if it's positive, we know there are going to be two solutions. And if it's negative, we'll be trying to take a square root of a negative number, and that would be kind of strange, actually. It would be kind of impossible. So uh, there wouldn't be a solution at all. And if it's zero, well, we just forget about it because there would just be minus b over 2a left over because that would be zero and we wouldn't care. So we could actually set up some rules here. Let, let's just give this a name, this thing in pink here. Why don't we call it uh, the discriminant? Yeah, let's call it the discriminant. And d, we'll make that stand for the discriminant. If it's greater than zero there are two roots. What is that? Two roots. There we go. Good save. If d equals zero, there will be only one root. Because we'll forget about that, we'll be left with, here, let me just put this here, discriminant equals zero, question mark. Then what we're left with, that's all that we're left with, whoops, over 2a. That's what we're left with of the quadratic formula when the discriminant equals zero. And that's why there would just be one root. And if d is less than zero, a negative number, then, well, we'd be trying to take the square root of a negative number, and there is no solution. There's no way to solve the problem. Now, one more thing to note here, and this is something that the book does a terrible, terrible, terrible non-job of telling you about. It doesn't tell you anything about this. All it says is that it's rational if the discriminant is a perfect square. Well, that doesn't tell you anything about factoring, but yet somehow, for some reason, the wizards who wrote this book decided to give you this question, which will be the subject of the next video, that says use the value of the discriminant to determine the tri if the trinomial can be factored. Well, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't give you the answer, but I'll give you the answer now. If the discriminant is a perfect square, you know, like 0, 1, 4, 9, 25, 36, 64, that kind of stuff, 49. If it's a perfect square, then you are wasting your time with the formula because it can be factored. That's right, your trinomial can be factored if the discriminant is a perfect square. So, first thing you should check if you're deciding what, what method should I use to solve this trinomial problem, well, check out the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, and if that happens to equal like 9 or 100 or 
you know, 625 or any one of these other perfect squares that you should have memorized up to a thousand, then you could factor it. 